Hi guys and welcome to HSC Chemistry and the production of materials topic. Strap in for this one because we need to look at the process of the industrial production of both low density polyethylene and high density polyethylene. And I've split these into two videos because there's really a lot of information and I want to try and give you a good overview so you understand each of these two processes and then we can have a look at the, the differences in the um, properties of each of these polymers later on. So this one is about low density polyethylene or LDPE. It was the first polymer of um, ethylene that was made and it's produced under high pressures. So uh, one to 3000 atmospheres and also relatively high temperatures, 300 degrees uh, C. It involves what we call free radical polymerization because free radicals are actually produced in this process. That is, they are um, atoms which are not charged, but which do not have a full um, complement of uh, electrons. And that specifically relates to the uh, carbon, but we'll have a look at that as we go along. Pre-radical polymerization is basically a three-step process, and those three steps involve initiation. So there's an initiator. Initiator, uh, which is often an organic uh, peroxide, and we'll have a look at uh, exactly what's the key to that a little bit later on. Um, then propagation, uh, which just uh, is another fancy word for saying growth. Uh, biologists will know that word. Um, so propagation is just growth as the polymer chain uh, increases. And then termination, we actually need to stop it at some point um, and produce our final product. So let's look at each of these steps in detail. Firstly, the initiation step. So the first thing we need to do is we need to generate a free radical species. And this occurs both um, with our um, initiator and also um, in its reaction with the first monomer. So um, definition then of a free radical is an atom or molecule with a single unpaired electron in its valence shell. So that is, it's not doesn't have that full complement, that octet rule that we look at we looked at before the single unpaired electron in its valence shell. So um, one of the simple ways of looking at that is carbon uh, should be bonded uh, to four different uh, atoms. Uh, we can uh, have exceptions to that, of course, if there are double bonds. But if we have a carbon bonded to three, and then the um, space where the fourth would be actually has no bond, then it becomes a free radical. So this is a free rad. What's going on? Okay, so here's an example, benzoyl peroxide. So this is an organic, what we call an organic peroxide. The structure is not critical. Um, this is a benzene ring, and you'll actually see benzene um, when we look a little bit more at polystyrene. Uh, which is just basically six carbons. So each of these junction points is a carbon. Um, and you can see there are uh, three double bonds here, here, and here. And there would be um, six hydrogens. So formula for benzene is C6H6. And then, of course, those carbons are involved in, in bonding other things. But the critical point is here, this oxygen-oxygen bond. This is the peroxide, and this is the bond that's going to break um, under heat or light. And don't forget, this is a process with about 300 degrees temperature and also um, thousands of atmospheres of pressure. So because these free radicals are highly reactive, they desperately want another electron to form a pair. They want to fill that octet. They want to be stable. And so they will find somewhere. So you can see the breakdown that occurs at that point, as I said, it's in this case, it's actually the oxygens um, that are the free radicals in this point something that's going to be really important later on when we look at ozone. It's a lot of noise. Um, so here is the unpaired electron, and so that's what's going to interact with our monomer unit. So a simple way of identifying that is just R just means an organic chain of any length um, with any anything attached to it. So the critical bit is that there is an oxygen-oxygen bond here. And when that breaks under heat or light, um, we get this oxygen-free radical. So what does that do? Well, what it does is it begins a process of propagation because the radical 
from the initiator will grab another electron from the nearest convenient source. So that could well be a carbon-carbon double bond. That has a very high electron density, that little cloud of, of four electrons that um, surround that location of the double bond is fairly unstable chemically. And so it will um, transfer one of those electrons to the uh, radical, to the oxygen radical on the end of that initiator. And as a result, we get a single bond between the two carbons and the regeneration of the radical center. So if you can see here, here's our free radical from our organic peroxide. Here is our ethene. And what's going to happen is that the, um, the free radical, which was here, is actually going to bond to one of the um, electrons from the um, carbon, but the other one is now not uh, bonded. So it itself has become a free radical. So this carbon here is the regeneration of the radical. And so all we've done basically is pass that um, uh, one unbonded electron from the initiator to the actual monomer itself. So um, obviously that's just as unstable. So now this electron here is going to look for a second one to bond in order to stabilize um, this particular carbon here. And it will find another double bonded carbon to do the same thing with. And so we'll obviously get growth occurring in that way. This process is going to continue on and on um, theoretically until there are no more monomer units left. But what happens is that these things start to get very large and long and tangled. And the reality is that these initiators will always be produced in pairs because obviously you're going to have, um, if you remember, we have RO and OR. So these are always produced in pairs. And as a consequence of that, there's plenty of other free radical centers in our reaction vessel and often they will stick to each other. Once that happens, of course, um, we get two of them combining and the electron pair forms and then the polymerization pr process will come to a stop. I guess one of the biggest and most important consequences of this process is that these are not simple long chains, but they contain numerous branches or side chains. And this is what leads to the low density character trait of this form of polyethylene. All of these side chains make it very difficult for the molecule to pack tightly together. Now that changes its properties and it's one of the reasons why LDP is so flexible and not as strong as, um, as the high density version. Just to finish off then, I guess just a little bit of an idea about um, how this sort of branching occurs. The key is that we have all these free radicals which exist in our reaction mixture. They double back, they uh, link in, they come from other places. And as a consequence, um, we can end up sometimes with um, all these little radicals either on the um, end linking together or sometimes even in the middle. And that can of course um, initiate a branching chain. It's important, I know this was a longer video, but this, it's important that you make sure that you understand the process of the industrial production of LDPE in order to discuss um, how it affects the um, properties and hence the uses of LDPE and how it differs with HDPE. And we'll look at that process in the next video. Thanks for watching.